Hey everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. I'm really happy to have you here with me today where we are going to be, actually we have a whole bunch to do, a whole bunch of things to do, but we are gonna start out today in the beehives. We're gonna go check out and see how our new hives are doing, make sure that the queen's doing her job and that they have enough room to be harvesting all, or um, putting all of the nectar that they're out harvesting right now. I lost my hives last November to wasps and I actually decided I was going to take a year off of beekeeping but then I was talking to my friends Nina and Winston at BCB Supply and I just decided to go ahead and get two more hives and give it another try. Winston and Nina are absolutely fantastic and I've been buying bees from them and all my bee equipment from them for a long time so if you are in um, BC or even in Canada. I do believe they ship across Canada and you're looking for bees or bee um, equipment, that is definitely the place to go. I'll put a link down in the show notes for you below if you want to go and check them out. I don't normally smoke my bees if I'm going in just to do a quick check on them like I'm doing today. If I was going to go and pull off a bunch of honey, then I would definitely be using my smoker, but I don't think I'm going to light it up. I did bring it down just in case the bees are feeling extra feisty this morning, but <clears throat> I think they'll be okay. These bees actually uh, so far have been quite gentle, which is fantastic. So once we're finished this, we have a whole bunch of harvesting to do up in the garden. We're going to harvest all of my garlic today. Um, it's a little bit later than I normally would be harvesting garden our garlic, but it's just been a bit of a weird season. So we're going to go get all our garlic harvested. Plus, I'm sure we have lots of other things in the garden to harvest as well. But first, let's get into these hives. I am definitely not one of those beekeepers that goes into my hives without being fully suited up. I've actually spent the majority of my life completely terrified of bees and wasps. But I definitely have to say that keeping bees has helped me to get over that fear for the most part, but I'm still not brave enough to go in without <laughs> being fully suited up. I'm not um, allergic to bees, but I do react quite badly to them and I swell up like a balloon <laughs> when I uh, get stung. Well, hello everybody. It's all right. It's all right. How you doing? I did give the bees some honey, um, some frames of honey when I put them in here just so that they um, had something to start with. I did give them some drawn out comb as well, and that is where there's comb, but I've already extracted the honey from it, just so that they didn't have to work quite so hard as they were starting out. But can you see what I mean about how gentle they are? They're just awesome. So we are gonna take this top box off here. It's all right, sweetheart. Um, so that I can make sure that the queen, because she's down below, this box at the top here, this is where they're storing all their honey. And the box down below is what's called the brood box. And that's where the queen is, hopefully, <laughs> laying her eggs. Ah, wasps, get out of here. Okay, <laughs> now they're like, hello. All right, here, honey, let's get you out of the water here. There you go, up you go, come on. Come on. I have this bowl of water here to help them have somewhere easy to drink. There you go, honey. There you go, okay. It's all right, you guys. A middle frame here. We definitely have, so you can see the honey around the outside of this. And then on the inside, this right here is capped brood. So that is a good sign. Let's go in a little bit closer into the middle here. 
Mm -hmm. It's all right, everybody. Okay, here we go. You can see all of that capped brood. So I'm just looking to see if I can find a queen here. Where are you, beautiful? here on that frame. Oftentimes what happens is when you open up a hive like this, the queen will just go down where it's dark and hide. It's all right. So what smoking does is it actually makes the bees think there's a forest fire and they go down into the hive and then they start gorging on honey because the risk that the forest fire might come and they might need to abandon the hive and go, oh, she might be there because they just got super active when I moved that one. Um, and they, so anyway, they'll go down and they'll be distracted with, because the reason that they'll do that, so the reason that they will do that is because they'll need to abandon the hive if the fire comes, right? And go and make something somewhere else and they need to gorge on all that honey so they have enough energy to do that. I do not see her, but I can see the evidence of her by all of these, all of this capped brood. So that's good enough for me. So let's get these guys closed back up again here. This was the more active of, or the more uh, robust of the two hives. So when I'm taking out my frames, I want to put them back in in the same order that I took them out. So when I'm putting these back in, I want to go really, really slow and gently so that I don't accidentally uh, roll the queen and kill her. Gently, gently, gently. I have some honey in here because it's not light. Then I want to put this down gently too because I don't want to squish any of my bees. There we go. We have some hot weather coming, so I'm just gonna have this tipped up so they have a little bit more ventilation in there. I just don't wanna have too much space because I don't want the wasps to be able to easily get in there. Okay, one hive done. Okay, that's no good. We have a little tiny bit of brood right here. Which means at some point she was playing. There. Okay, so this is weakness. See, there's bees still dive bombing me. So they'll chase you for up to a couple kilometers sometimes, but I'll just go up to the house. By that point, they should be leaving me alone and then I can get into some cooler clothes because it's very warm out. I'm going to give Winston a call when I get up to the house and see what he recommends to do with my queenless hive. I'm not sure if he can send me a queen, it's kind of late in the season, or what he's going to recommend, but I'll let you know. I'm not sure if I mentioned this in our last video or not, but we have um, the property that is just beyond the fence line that's halfway through this field is our neighbor's property, and they have really heavy equipment. They're a really big ranch over there, and these are floodplains that we hay down this way, so it's pretty wet down there, so they came and asked if Dan wanted to um, do that haying for a 50-50 split. He is doing a little bit of work on our haying equipment over here so that he can get out and cut because we're going to get another heat wave 
for the next week, which is perfect timing. We have had crazy, crazy rain for several days this week. I can't remember how many millimeters it was, but it was a lot. It was 35 millimeters of rain in a very short period of time. So the garden definitely <laughs> liked that. Everything completely exploded. Look at the size of these pickling cucumber plants compared to when we were down here only four days ago harvesting pickling cucumbers. So I imagine there's quite a few in there that we need to pick. We also have a ton of zucchini up there, of course, that we need to harvest. But today we need to harvest our garlic. I don't have a huge patch of garlic to harvest, just this row and that little bit up there. So we'll see how many we get when we get it all pulled out. I do have, I think, six or seven different varieties in here, and I grew soft neck garlic. I grew uh, music for the first time ever, so I'm curious to see how that one did. Okay, so the ones that are up here, from here back, are Susan Delafield. So. Woo! Now that's a nice size looking bulb. Look at that one. Gorgeous. So that's uh, great for the first one to pull. So normally I like to wait and harvest my garlic when the ground is, is dry, not super wet like it is. But I'm worried that if I leave it in the ground for that much longer, it's going to start splitting. So I've decided just to go for it and get it picked now. And I need to take my shoes off. There we go. So this is one that I left the scape on and I did this for a cross comparison because the idea is is that if you take off the scape that the plant will put the energy into making a larger bulb and if you don't take it off you end up with a tiny little bulb like that so check out <laughs> that difference uh, okay so taking scapes definitely a good idea with your hard neck varieties so we do have some splitting happening there. So that's what happens when they're over mature. That's why I wanted to get these out. <sighs> wow. These Susan Delafields are beautiful and huge. So I buy all my seed garlic from race a seed garlic in boundary country here in bc and they've never let me down always gorgeous ah. oh dear <laughs> look at that one whoops okay i am going to get all of this garlic picked I have to go find myself a shovel because this soil is pretty wet and a little bit compacted. So I'm having a hard time pulling these out without a shovel. And then when I'm done, I'll show you what we ended up with and what my plans are for this bed because I'm not going to let all this growing space go to waste. We have so many gorgeous worms in the garden this year. Just fabulous. My plan is to reshape this bed a little bit and pull the weeds out. And then I'm going to plant my spinach in here because I didn't plant any spinach. Actually, I like growing spinach in the fall because it can handle our cooler fall temperatures. So this is going to be a giant spinach bed when we're all finished. <laughs> it's just massive. Okay, so these ones now are creme de la rosa is this next set. So we'll see how they are. So we've got a couple of these Susan Della fields left that are just enormous. <laughs> Look at the size of that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's huge. 
huge. Okay, how are the creme de la rosa? Smaller, but still decent. So that's not bad. Oh my gosh, look at this. So this one's the Talon. Look at the size of that. What a beauty. I think these ones compete in size with the uh, Susan Delfield. They're humongous. Look at the size of my garlic. It's massive. I know, <laughs> it's huge. Dan is out cutting the hay. It's always exciting. And we have our garlic all laid out in here. I just cannot get over the size of these bulbs. Very exciting. So it's definitely not a ton of garlic, but fortunately one of my neighbors grows a lot of garlic and I shared a whole bunch of plants with her, some starts in the spring. So she offered to share some garlic with me when she does her big harvest. So I'm gonna have more than enough garlic to last us the year, which is fantastic. So the whole bed down here is now cleared out. So now we are going to reshape that because um, I have these pathways with grass pathways in between that we walk on and the grass does start to encroach a little bit into the bed. So when I remove everything, we always recut those edges in so that we have um, the beds back to the size that we started out with. And then I'm going to be planting a whole bunch of spinach in that bed. So I am absolutely melting hot now after pulling all that garlic. So I'm going to head up to the house, give Winston a call and see about um, sourcing a queen for my queenless hive. And then we'll come that back down and plant the spinach and probably get at least the zucchinis harvested because they are humongous. Hi, Boba. <laughs> Hi, buddy. How are you? Back down in the garden, I have my seeds here. I'll share them with you in just a second with what varieties I'm gonna grow. Okay, let me show you what we're gonna plant in this bed. I'm just going to get um, a shovel and just straighten out the edges and rake the top nice and smooth. But we are going to do one toy choy. So this is a bok choy, but just a little tiny one. Um, and it is, I think this one was a 50 day, yeah, 30 to 50 day. So we have enough time for that. We have Renegade F1. These are a coated spinach seed, Bloomsdale Savoy, Olympia, and Giant Winter. So I'm gonna plant this entire bed with spinach because we love spinach. Well, most of us love spinach, not all my kids like spinach, but lots of us do. Um, and the way that I preserve this is I just blanch it and freeze it. And then I throw that into all kinds of things over the winter. This is one of the only plants that I can actually start right now for a fall harvest. Our season is too short, winter comes on too fast, and we get frost too early for us to start much else. But even though this is a 50 day, so this is gonna bring us to the end of September and we'll have had several frosts by that point, usually uh, spinach can handle a little bit of frost and I do have some frost blankets this year so I will be able to cover them up and give them a little added protection. So let's get this bed cleaned up and get planting. All right, friends, it's been a little bit of an adventure. So when I was out getting the bed ready for the spinach, Dan came up and shared with me that he had got the tractor stuck out in the field. So this doesn't come as a huge surprise. I think I mentioned earlier that one of the reasons that our neighbors asked us to do it is because we have lighter tractors and it's a peat, um, not a bog, but it's a peat flood plain. And so 
it's uh, very easy to get stuck. Thankfully, we were able to get it out, but it took a solid hour in the blazing heat and we were completely done <laughs> at that point. Uh, Dan came in, cooled off, went back out and got the entire field cut, which is fantastic. But I stayed inside where it was cool and decided to wait and come out until the sun went behind the mountain, which it has now done. One of the advantages of this property in the summertime is that because the mountain is to the west when the sun goes down, we cool off because as you can see, it's still hot and sunny over there, but we cool off and it gets nice and cool in the evening. So it's comfortable for sleeping. It's not as great in the winter time when our days are already really short, but it is really fantastic in the summertime. So we're going to head back down and get all of the spinach planted. We are going to hold off and do all the harvesting on the pickling cucumbers and the zucchini tomorrow so that'll be in the next video but we will get this part done at least anyway okay let's get some rows in here oh it's so nice and cool out here there's a lot of things about living and gardening in the north that can be quite challenging, but the cool evening temperatures after a hot summer's day is fantastic. I love stirrup hose for making lines to plant in. Okay, so let's start with Renegade. I have a young rooster over there who's just finding his voice. He sounds pretty cute. Boom, stale Savoy. And last up. Giant winter. You guys aren't usually here with me in the evening. It's kind of nice. Lighting's really nice in the evening, isn't it? Okay, we still have the toy choy, the pok choy that we need to plant, but I'm going to hang on and do that tomorrow in the little patch at the end of that part of the garden. I'm going to try filling out other areas as we clear them out. So for instance, we're probably going to pick all of our turnips here pretty soon and put those into the root cellar. And then I'm going to plant buckwheat in that area. And then I'll just turn the buckwheat in as a green manure into as a green soil amendment into the soil. I haven't tried doing that before, so we'll give that a try and see how that goes. Okay, so this is that head of music garlic. Look at the size of that. It's enormous. Put this back into the greenhouse. So where I have cured both my garlic and my onions uh, prior to starting to do it in here in the last couple of years as I would hang them up in my undercover deck on the north side because it would be out of the direct sunlight and there's a nice breeze there. But I tried curing them in here. So this has a double layer of UV protection and with the uh, vents, there we go, the vents and the door open, there's actually a nice breeze blowing through here most of the time and I do have a fan I can turn on if it gets too hot but I have found this to be a great place to cure both my garlic 
and my onions. I did so many onions last year that all of the shelves were full. I don't think we're gonna have quite as good of a year this year, but there should still be quite a few. I didn't get a hold of Winston today, so I'm hoping to talk to him tomorrow about my queenless hive issue and hopefully get that resolved. And now we need to close up the high tunnel. As you can see, I have the rolled up sides open, back and front doors open, so we're gonna close that up, but check this out. We have some ripening tomatoes there, ripening tomatoes there. These absolutely stunning crushed heart tomatoes. Aren't those exquisite? And an update on our melons. Look at all of these melons, my friends. Look at them all. We have tons of northern melons in here and I am so excited about these. My first time ever growing this variety of melons. I've never been successful growing melons up here, but I think that I'm going to be this year, which is really exciting. That is going to be it for me today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed spending some time with me in the garden and with my bees, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.